Thank you for joining us on this podcast today. We're going to be talking about divorce, oh the boy. reasons for divorce, why people get divorced, um, and and just share our opinions. Happy Monday. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Monday. <laughs> Intense topic for Monday, but uh, please comment, subscribe. So why don't we start with this? Uh, pretty let's start for, with Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra, what is an acceptable reason to get divorced? Mm, there's a lot of acceptable mm. reasons for divorce. Um, I, so I, I was watching the video that you were referring to in terms of Sebastian. And one of the things that he did say on there was, um, like not being able to just fully be yourself mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, I thought, I think that's a, a big one. Um, but obviously there's more to that, you know, we can unpack that, but uh, I think that there's, a there's a lot. Um, I mean, infidelity, like finances, just like things that you can't reconcile, uh, I think are, uh, are good reasons for it. So, uh, okay. I think there's a lot that we right. can can't be yourself finances. All right. Infidelity, everything. There's a lot. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Andre, same thing. Um, mm -hmm. infidelity. Um, obviously there are those cases where you can come back from that and mm -hmm. fix it as long as both of you guys are wanting to. I, I agree. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. but if yeah. there's like a constant pattern that it's just not working and that person keeps going out of the relationship, um, I think that's acceptable. Um, finances, but I think obviously there's context to that. Um, and yeah, I think everything that Sandra said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Molly? The part in which Sabs was talking about control, right? Mm -hmm. So controlling the other person, not allowing yourself to be, not being who you are authentically, mm -hmm. I think those are probably the main reasons why people, I don't know, I'm not really well versed in this topic, to be honest, but I can only, I can't imagine being in relationships, whether it is friendships or personal or business and pretending to be someone else mm -hmm. right it's that whole piece of not only lying to people but you're lying to yourself at that point mm -hmm. so and I mean, then you don't feel like you can be yourself because the other person's holding you back essentially yeah yeah okay all right okay and you're the one person that you can't lie to <laughs> you are the one person you can't um lie to. I, I agree with all of their sentiments. Uh, I think there may be a, a kind of difference in topics whenever it comes to people that are mutually deciding to separate and then mm -hmm. one person that is trying to make a decision without mm -hmm. it necessarily being something that's talked about. But what kind of comes to my mind immediately is if um, their actions and behaviors continue to work against you. Yeah. And, and can you give examples of that? <clears throat> mm. um, not off the top of my head. Well, I would say you know, this is a tricky, tr tricky topic because you have to contextually understand yeah. me mm -hmm. before I unpack this. Um, because as we soundbite this and turn it into little clips, that could be very misunderstood just based on the comments we've seen. So I'm going to first say, and if we take this whole clip, I want to make sure it's heard. One of my biggest concerns with the behavior, supportive behavior in our current society is the lack of commitment. Um, because so much of the deep work is done in commitment. Mm -hmm. right. right. And so we live in a world of escapism and nowism where instead of doing the deep work and figuring out you know, why this relationship isn't working, we just run from it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a big fan of that at all. And so from that context, I'm not a big fan of divorce. That being said, if you're asking me when is, the, when is it appropriate to get divorced, for sake of word economy, I would say when the relationship is no longer serving you. Now, I can say that from the position that I'm speaking from, but I understand and if, that was just, if that was just a sound bite, people would be like, well, what do you mean? That's so selfish, that's so ego, that's so... That's all about you. That isn't about commitment. And you have to get me in context of what I mean by that. So no longer serving you means there's nothing more for you to learn in this relationship. right? This isn't about commitment. This is about your personal growth. So my psychological needs 
fundamentally are all around growth and contribution. So if a relationship is no longer serving those two things, it's time for it to evolve and what it looks like. So I think one of the things that we've, we're evolving through in our society is this undue uh, idealization of marriage and commitment and what it means that keeps people stuck and trapped and they have to jump into another lifetime to figure it out because they got stuck in the last one. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. Uh, all right. I would say there's three reasons in my mind why people should get divorced. Um, severe abuse, physically or mentally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or infidelity. Those are the three reasons. Any other reason outside of those things? I feel like there were, that was two. Did you say one more and I missed it? I think physical abuse, abuse it, yeah. mental yeah. abuse, and Physical abuse, mental abuse. Oh, you, you, you took those as two separate yeah. things. Yeah. I'm tracking. All right. yeah. Physical abuse, <laughs> mental abuse. I mean, you could argue that they're the same thing, but um, and infidelity meaning you step outside of the original agreement that you agreed to. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, every situation requires context, mm -hmm. so I don't want to paint a broad brush with, with regards to who and who shouldn't be divorced. But for the most part, those are the three things. And I also think that not everyone's for marriage. Like, I think if, this is my personal opinion, and I don't want to project onto anyone, but Mm -hmm. yeah, duty and honor is very important. <laughs> I think duty and honor, and I think we need I think to draw both, for that. Yeah, I, I think I think both um, both parties ha need to be seriously take into consideration duty and honor. And if if they're not both about duty and honor, I think that's a marriage insti mar uh, like uh, institution for marriage. Duty and honor is an institution for marriage. And if you if you're not about duty and honor, then I don't think you should step into marriage. I think you should maybe have a ceremony, have a party. But I just don't think it's for you. And for our um, listeners, can you describe duty and honor for us? Just give us a nice little healthy definition overview. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Um, so for me, duty and honor is you. It's not a, you. You place your needs um, aside for the the family that you create. So if you have a daughter, if you have a son, your needs are placed aside. So if you're unhappy in a marriage. That's not a reason, like unless you're severely abused. If you're unhappy, if you feel like you can't be yourself, to me, me personally, I think that's not a good reason to get, to get divorced. Um, and I also think what I think Westernized society is much different than a lot of other cultures in that there's a lot of different reasons. Like in Western society, we have hundreds of reasons why why we get divorced. That's why our divorce rate's like 53 percent. Can you guys guess? what the the country is that has the least divorce rate, the lowest divorce rate? Hmm. Probably a Middle Eastern country yeah, or something say. with some very stringent mm -hmm. cultural views and laws around a woman. Is it? Uh, He's yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know, I'm asking you. you. <laughs> if you were to guess, what country? Somewhere in the Middle East. Somewhere. Um... So, okay, so we have a 53% divorce rate in America. Mm -hmm. Are we saying first world countries? Because that would change things. Because yeah. people get married for an entirely different set of reasons when you're not in first world. I would argue, though, that if you look statistically at the people that come from these countries, the divorce rate stays very similar to, the, to their native country. So I'll give you the lowest divorce rate. India at 1%. Billion wow. people, India has a 1% divorce rate. And I would argue that they take that over to the U.S. too. So there's something to be said about that. So there's, there's, there's cultures that overly emphasize duty and honor, which means I put another person's need, needs above myself consistently. And then if two parties get together and they think that, they both think that, then it's not about I don't like this or I don't love this or I don't, I don't like this situation, whatever the case may be. It's more what are their, that person's needs. It's always a focus on the other person and children. So what do you guys think of that? Awesome. I mean, I think in marriage in general, I had, um, I'll frame this in a way because my parents have been married now for 33 years and I just asked him like, Wee. what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe 34, wait, <laughs> 33, 30, mm, I think it's 33 anyways. And I asked him, I was like, well, what's, what's your secret? And their biggest one was sacrifice. So whatever they did for them, um, each other first, before my sister and I 
became a family with them. Like they knew that their commitment to each other was either going to be, all right, I'm going to work or not work in order to make sure then um, my kids are going to be fed or whatever. And then they both like had two jobs at the same time to make sure that they had money. So sacrificing time away from each other. Um, and so I understand that part of duty and honor, right? So I understand what you're saying about that. I don't think I'm going to argue with that. I think I'm just going to agree with you. But then I like thought about it in this way because now married, now married, I think about um, how I am really working on myself to make sure I'm growing. Mm -hmm. And I can't force my partner to do the same. He has to do it himself. So the sacrifice is that time away from me. Like I, I think about that. I'm like the time away from each other is our sacrifice right now. I remember our discussion. You were talking. You said something. I forgot what it was exactly, but I just remembered something that resonated with me. Was just how um, there will be those seasons, right? We all have those seasons in which we will sacrifice time, energy, or a space or whatever, just so that we can serve each other. Um, that's all. Like that's all I think about when I. When you say duty and honor. Mm. Do you know within that 1% um, how many people in that society are still doing arranged marriages? I would say it's a high percentage, yeah. Yep. I mean, you can always look at it like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, but then if you make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, you, you would say um, Western society to Indian Americans. That's what you say, and I, I would say... I mean, I don't know anecdotally, I just know this, but mm -hmm. we can look up the stats, mm -hmm. but I think it's close to 1% to divorce rate within the United States, the Indian culture. And then I would say, so Egypt is at 17%, and that's just all of Egypt. I would say Coptic Orthodox is probably at like maybe 5%, 6% divorce rate, and there's something to that. If you look at the, the children that are raised, highly educated, contributors to society, usually very normal, healthy people in general, um, and I would say there's a lot of stats on uh, kids that, that come from divorced marriages. Mm -hmm. They come out you know, more delinquent with regards to you know, just the laws and grades and a lot of different things. And so there's something to be said about that. But it, everything requires context. Like we have yeah. somebody like, that's one of our really, really good friends, and she was physically abused, and she got divorced. Mm. Now, in, in the Coptic Orthodox uh, religion... There's, there's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very strong culturally that you should not get divorced. So it's very hard to get divorced. So if you get married <laughs> within the Coptic Christ, uh, Christian Orthodox religion, mm -hmm. you actually have to get, you can't just get divorced on your own. Mm -hmm. You have to get approval from like four priests and a bishop. <laughs> like, literally. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah so. It's some work. It, it's called, um, and then if you have like a legitimate reason and that, that falls under like abuse, uh, you know, physical abuse, infidelity, whatever the case may be, those three things I think are what fall into what is acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, then they can agree and they can give you what's called hell, which is you can get married again within the, the community. But if, if, you're not ex if it's not accepted amongst those priests and the bishop, then you cannot get married within the same church. What if you say, F this, I'm not going to deal with the priest and the other people. I'm just going to go to my lawyer and get divorced. You can do that. Yeah, obviously, yeah, you can do that. It's just among it's just like, the church. It yeah. the, the, the legalities of it, yeah, it's fine. But you can't get married within the church. So what happens is... You get is, exiled. Yeah, no, it, it's not that you're exiled, but what happens is people will not look... Like they'll look down on you. They, uh, it's going to be very difficult to get married within the same community. If you lived in that community for your entire life, mm, it's, you're going to lose a lot of friends mm -hmm. because of that. Um, it's, I, I don't think that's a, a great thing that, that it happens that mm -hmm. way, but it is what it is. Hmm. Right? Um, it's a very severe thing to get divorced. Um, that's probably why people don't get divorced because then they're like, I have to go through this entire thing There's, and yeah. lose community. There's layers to this. And, and the other part of it is marriage for a lot of the world is about survival. Mm. So it's a totally different frame. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with love. It has nothing to do with connection. That comes later. It's about survival. So if you're, if you're in survival mode, you just find a way to make it work. Well, and in that's other been countries most, too, strategy, mm -hmm. they are going to, partner or pair you um, families marrying to, mm -hmm. to, to yeah. strengthen Their bloodlines families. and connections mm -hmm. one to another uh, and arranged marriages is the same the same concept mm -hmm. so that's a different context for me it's more 
what did, how do people show up in free societies, mm-hmm. right? Because that, to me, is a leading indicator. What do people do when they're free, when they're free to make a choice? Mm. Now, we could talk about all the reasons why people get married that are absolutely bonkers in our society. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. I was like, what that, are some of the reasons? That's a bigger you know? part of the problem in a free society is when you're free to make a decision, you're free to make a stupid decision, and there's a lot of that where people are, are getting married for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to have an extenuating problem as you go down the road, and it's not a good match. And I'm not even... I'm not even saying I'm a uh, I'm opposed to matchmaking because I think there is wisdom in that. Um, it, it's just it creates its own set of issues. I, I would argue though that the again I, I mean I, this is just anecdotally I'd have to get the stats on this, but I would argue that the cultures that come from those countries they 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 become Americanized and they still the, the divorce rates are, are very similar. If you're first or second generation, yeah. and specifically when you're talking about Indian culture, they are heavily integrated into their Indian culture. So that doesn't surprise me at all. If you go first, right. like third, fourth, fifth generation, where they're... They start marrying white dudes. Yeah, exactly. Then, <laughs> <laughs> then that's a different... It doesn't happen often. Because culture... It, 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 and there's a, lot, there's a lot of reasons for that. But even coming here, one of those reasons would again be survival. You're safer together. Um, so, you know... Which isn't to say that there isn't a beauty in being able to stay together and there isn't a beauty in duty and honor and being committed. I think those things are all wonderful, but we kind of have to take a deeper dive on those stats to really understand what's going on. The other part that cracks me up um, is this idea like, and, and we see this a lot, especially in religion. And I'll give you an example. You're in an unhealthy relationship that is, neither, neither party is growing. There may be some kind of abuse and you'll be encouraged to stay together and work it out, right, within religion. But if one or either party, quote unquote, has sex with someone else, now nah, fucking hell, it's over, mm-hmm. right? Everything else could be good, right? Everything else could be like, hey, we're good, like marriage is good, but that's a reason to, to divorce. That, like, that is laughable to me. And I'm like, how in the hell did we get mm-hmm. there, right? Where somebody is in an abusive relationship, but because there is commitment, and there isn't, they're not stepping out of the marriage, oh, oh, you know, continue to work on that one. Then you can have the opposite, where the relationship is fairly stable and healthy, but one or both parties are, mm-hmm. are hooking up with other people, and that's like, get the fuck out of yeah, divorce that person. Mm-hmm. Like, what? How does that make sense? I can't do the math I on that. I would say it's good to work through that if there's infidelity. I mean, if it happens all the time, probably not. Yeah. But, but if it's like once or twice, mm-hmm. it's a mistake. Everybody's, nobody's perfect, mm-hmm. right? So I would say work through it. You know, yeah. M- m- uh, you know, move past it somehow. Get counseling, and I don't even. I'm not even. I don't think you need counseling necessarily from a licensed therapist all the time. I think you can get counseling from somebody that you really look up to, somebody that has been there, has done that, is very successful in their marriage or whatever the case may be. You can get counseling from that person if you have that. If you have that luxury, if you don't, then go to a licensed therapist for sure. Um, counselor is a scary word in the United mm-hmm. States too, because it doesn't really take anything to be a counselor. You can just go sign up and become one, mm-hmm. just so everyone knows. Therapist, yeah. Well, therapist, therapist, therapist is different. Yeah, if you're if you there is a certified therapist or somebody who's gone through a program and has their their degree, that's different. But there are lots of quote unquote Christian counselors that it does not take a lot to get that title next to your name. That doesn't mean you know a whole lot. I have a cousin that has a PhD in uh, family therapy, and I would not go to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just there's, a, there's, an old, there's an old saying among <laughs> therapists. <laughs> 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 Awkward. <laughs> that was actually really funny. <laughs> but it's true. There, there's an old saying among therapists. That's like, I tell it's, her they're oh, crazy. That's, that's so why bad. they get a degree. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> crazy ones get a degree. I, by the way, I would tell her straight to her face the same thing. Uh, but, yeah, there's no way I would she would not be somebody that I would go to for therapy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of reasons to get divorced um, that I think is acceptable in Western society. I think, so statistically, there's what, 53% divorce rate in Western society, and 80% are initiated by women. 80% of the divorces, that's a stat. So mm-hmm. what, what do you ladies think about that, Sebastian? said ladies. Ladies. Um, do you have a, an age group that is prominently in that stat? I don't have that stat, no. But I, I would, it, so it's 80% are initiated by women. And then if we pull up the comments, we can go over 
kind of what a lot of the women said in the comments. Which, it, it I would probably that. have to wager a bet that since men are typically more, this is not the right word, but I'm just going to say it promiscuous, that there may be more infidelity on the men's side, mm -hmm. which makes women want to leave the relationship. And I was hearing this from um, Casey recently, too. Like, she'll text back and forth with some of um, the school moms that the kids mm -hmm. are, like, spending more time with and, like, getting dropped off or picked up from practice and stuff like that. And it's like these women literally just want to share their entire, <laughs> like, life with her. And she's like, I feel bad because I don't know if they like even can talk to their husband or if they even do connect with their husband it seems mm -hmm. like he's just kind of like distant and off working and and do his own things and into sports and into video games and like literally doesn't spend any time with me mm -hmm. yep. so that seems i think like that hard. that could be more common as well again i'm like totally guessing and making sweeping generalizations but i think those are things that you hear about pretty commonly. It create a little context around that. I, th I think that's an interesting idea, at least anecdotally. In dating relationships, it's fairly even, um, meaning men and women tend to break up in equal numbers. I think it was favored a little bit towards men, but not much. It was fairly even. Mm. So, But you're right. It is drastically towards women. Uh, and I would offer another side to this, and we'd have to get the stats to see why they're breaking up. And irreconcilable differences, I think, is the number one <laughs> most common thing that is said, mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly. But this may go back to duty and honor, where mm -hmm. there's a lot of men who feel trapped in relationships, but they feel like duty and honor mm -hmm. says, yeah. I, have to, I have to withstand this. And they kind of create their own little bubble to stay copacetic. And then the woman feels no she connection and feels trapped. Mm -hmm. And then she's just over it. And it's like, in other words, he's not stepping up probably in the woman's mind and being a man and just getting this done. And so she has to be the one to initiate and get it done. Mm -hmm. But I've coached and counseled enough men to know that there's a lot of dudes that get stuck in relationship who feel duty and honor is the reason why mm. they're just going to find a way to get through it. And I, I don't, I could be totally wrong, I, but in first world countries, I don't think a woman wants to think the only reason you're with me is duty and honor. Mm -hmm. I would take the, the countries out and I would, I would inter change that with culture. I think, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I think, a lot of there's a lot of duty and honor with women in other cultures than compared to Western cultures. That's what I would argue. So, I what think, do you mean? So th there's like in, um, for example, Egyptian culture, there's more duty and honor amongst the women than there are if you compare that to the American women, the the Westernized women. There's more duty and honor. There's like it's a common. How would you sentiment. describe women's rights in Egypt right now? Women's rights in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Again culture they take the culture over to america and it's this very similar but, divorce rates. but what okay yeah. if you would have to paint the picture of the common wife mm -hmm. in egypt right now what is her role she she doesn't have the rights that you would have in america like um such as like uh, uh you know like to be honest like uh, egypt is more westernized than the other middle eastern countries it is mm -hmm. um this is why compared i'm picking to, like, on Saudi. egypt because just take it to the 10th degree and you'll understand what most of the middle east is <clears throat> yeah so uh i would say uh inability to wear what you want mm -hmm. uh there's that there's the inability to to make your own decisions there's the fact that wait wait so let's say the second one again. The, the inability in some cases to make your own decisions. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the third thing is, um, like, there's there's uh, there's inequities in Egypt. Like, uh, well, then how is a duty and honor if they don't have the ability to have duty and honor? Correct. Because it's ingrained in the culture, and even when they wow. take the culture over to the U.S., it's the, it stays the same. And it doesn't it, like the Coptic culture. It's a Christian culture. It's much different than the Islamic culture. They take it over, and it's it, very similar divorce rates. Very. Would there low be divorce consequences rates. if a wife were to file for question. divorce for the to the husband? Would there be like some stone. kind of shunning so, or that's Islam? Mm -hmm. oh. Coptic isn't quite as gnarly. Agreed. In those countries, it's harder to get divorced uh, for women. And actually, I think you can't get divorced as a woman. You can only get we'll divorced. see. Okay. If you're if you're a man, if you're yeah, that's true. That's that's a that's a that's a good point. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah, you can't. You just slip that one in. <laughs> I know, wow, like, well, women do not why. get divorced. In oh, by the way, it's also <laughs> illegal can't. for them to get divorced. I, I, I don't know. It's I don't incredible. know. I don't know for a fact if that's the case, but I would say 
that regardless of that specific area, I, mean, I don't even know if it's true, if they come over to the US, they get super Americanized, the divorce rates are very similar. So I think duty and honor is an ingrained aspect of those cultures. Uh, same with Asian cultures, same with uh, one of the lowest divorce rates is um, people from Chile, you know, uh, Latin cultures, very low divorce rates. Um, and, and again, I, there's a beauty in what you're saying, and I don't want to deny that. But if you come from a culture in which your survival was predicated upon it, sure as shit that's going to be ingrained in you because your survival is, is predicated upon it. So I got to see when we get through three or four generations and they're no exactly. longer living in that kind of societal structure. Because a lot of first, second generation, which is many reasons why they do very well when they first get here, they're still in survival mode. They still think in survival. Not necessarily, no. Because the, usually the immigrants that come from other countries to here are usually the most educated. That's true. The, the, the people that become the most successful. So the second generation of those people are usually people that have it pretty well. Yeah. So uh, even in those scenarios with a second generation, you have people that have very similar divorce rates. Very, very similar divorce rates. And that's do we, because... Do we, do we know this statistically? This is just so anecdotally. This mm. is so I want to say I want to put that out there. Yeah, we can look up the stats. So in your experience, that's been the case. In my experience, in my yeah. community, it's very uncommon for people to get divorced, and if there's an extreme reason when they get divorced, and what what does that result in? And I think there's a reason why there's that whole process of like getting divorced with a priest, because if you don't have something like that in society, in, in your community. I think the community will just start to disintegrate over time. Because if you if you want to hurt a country, if you want to hurt a community, attack the family. And you're 100% mm -hmm. right about that. That's very attack well said. Attack the family. Yep, you're right. Um, strong families create strong communities. Strong communities create strong nations. Now, obviously, everything requires context. And there are examples that you can, that are exceptions to the rule. Um, but I think overall, Western society is overly sensitive with regards to making a quick decision towards divorce. I think we're way we're way too trigger happy with that. We're going through a we're going through a bit of a a revolution or a transition as women become more free. There is an equalization that is happening, and that's going to be messy until it's not. And, and going back to what you're saying, I don't want to skip over that. In a lot of the world, women do not have the right to speak up, oh, and 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 to be able to share their needs and their desires and their wants in a way. Uh, and in our society, they are. Now, I, there's, a, there's a lot of fuck things, fucked up things about our society that we need to work through, but that's what freedom creates. Freedom creates a mess, right? And so there's, I get why a lot of cultures don't want freedom, because it's messy. It's also incredibly beautiful when you let it manifest and unfold, because it gives people space to actually grow the fuck up. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see this a lot in, in, in cultures where everything is heavily controlled. People don't get to grow because they don't get to make mistakes. You see this a lot within religion, right? Super legalistic churches um, where people are afraid to come forward and share their, their fears, share their problems, to share their sins, if you will. They're, they get stuck and they don't grow. And then suddenly the worship leader is sleeping with the pastor's <laughs> wife. I'm not making that up. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what the fuck just happened there? Well, what do you think happened? There was no safe place to deal with my shit. There was no freedom in that. And it's, you know, and so we have a certain amount of freedom here and that creates an insane amount of mess, right? And we need to grow through it because, and I think part of it is we maybe need to re-examine the institution of marriage, re-examine why we get married because a lot of mm -hmm. that is, is very silly, right? We get we get married for a lot of silly reasons. I think a lot of people should not get married because mm -hmm. they don't they they don't understand marriage for what it is. What do you think are good reasons to get married? Are good reasons to get married? Um, I think Taxes. the primary reason, <laughs> reason, the primary reason <laughs> is to raise a family. Yeah, the primary reason is to raise a family. I don't see to me personally because like marriage isn't like it's not something I was super excited about. Like, I think a lot of men in general are not super excited about marriage. We don't, we don't, we're not taught from like a very young age, hey, you need to have this big ceremony and you don't envision it, you know, from a young age. All we're taught, all we hear from society is you're gonna lose half your shit. You're gonna, you're gonna lose. <laughs> Jesus. You're, this is what, this is like what's constantly fed to us. You're gonna lose half your shit. It's not worth it. Do not get married. Like, <laughs> That's so funny. It. It's, uh, 
Like, like you're gonna you're gonna be stuck. Uh, <laughs> it, it's expensive. Oh, you're gonna go through a divorce. You're, you, the the your ex wife is gonna get custody of the children, and you have little recourse with regards to that. Um, so why nice. why do you think you got married? Why do you think marriage <laughs> creates the right container for family? It's a good question. I think um, because there's a level of commitment uh, that. that far exceeds any other type of relationship. And because of that, it ensures that as a son or daughter, I'm gonna have a father and a mother in my life. And if I see, obviously, a bad relationship's not good to see, but if I have a good relationship, you're gonna put that son or daughter in the best position to be successful in life, to be prepared to, to um, do a lot of different things that are, contributed, are contributing to society. So you said a couple things that are pretty yeah. interesting there. You said it, the commitment ensures mm -hmm. when we're talking about, I think, a 58% divorce rate currently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. There is a 58% divorce rate, and I think that's why I would say, I would argue, if you're not committed enough, don't get married. Don't get married at all. And I, I would also say, like, in Western society, Western culture, it's very risky to get married in Western culture. You have to, I would, I would argue that if you want to get married, Try to find a culture that has a very low divorce rate. And, I, and uh, to be honest, this is just like my opinion. I'm not, I'm not trying to force my opinion on, on other people. Go but find an say, Indian. <laughs> Go get Indian. married to yeah. them. Yeah, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying like. I'm pretty sure I was Indian I, in my last lifetime. As, a, as, a, <laughs> as somebody that's logical, as somebody that understands benefits and risks, if you're going to marry uh, someone that's part of Western society, you have a 53% chance of getting divorced. And it's just, it's just what it is. So, so in, 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 uh, there was a point in time with what you're saying is probably accurate, but when we have a divorce rate that that's high, I have a hard time distinguishing marriage and commitment as the same thing. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know, I don't have stats to back this up and is mostly anecdotal, but I do know lots of people who are deeply committed to one another who have been together for a very long time that yeah. are not married. But there's, and, a, there's an argument to be made for that. Maybe mean, you shouldn't get married. Ma meaning, yeah. meaning the, to me, and maybe this is going to sound too woo-woo, marriage is of the heart, not a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You don't need an institution to identify with what marriage means to you and commitment. I think I agree to that to some extent. Um, but th there's also like the, the, the aspect of getting the government into your relationship. It's kind of... Gross. It's kind of gross, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time... Like, as a woman, if I'm going to have a baby, I'm going to give up part of my working career to take care of this baby. I, I want to be ensured that I have something, like, some, some type of security. That's I'm incredibly gonna, romantic. I want to ensure, <laughs> okay. But I want to ensure, <laughs> you, it can be as romantic as you, as you want it to be. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, like, uh, but there's something to be said about that. Like, I mean, I, I, I am taken care of if this doesn't work out. You're, t you're really taken care of either way. Mm -hmm. uh, well, taking care of is not well, the right word. Get, I don't you, want to you use that phrase. You can get child support, but you can't get alimony. That's true. If you don't get married, so you get a, at least you get alimony. Yeah, that's I mean. so gross. <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. I would have never thought of it like that. Like I need to get married because God forbid we divorce, right. and then I need money. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I would never think of it like that. And even just this conversation, I'm like, Do what I is the point in getting married? Hmm. That, that's a, you were, like as it. as women, we you know we want the wedding, we want the ring, we want that. But how many have we? And I'm sure I can ask you too. Did you feel different the moment you got married? Did you say, "Wow, all of a sudden we are two very improved"? We're way more committed to each other yeah. now. No, we're super the piece committed. of paper well, no. that Cat signed. Yeah. And oh, wait, wait, isn't there something I still have to sign? <laughs> what? <laughs> What did you say? Yeah. I said, isn't there something I still have to sign? Oh, no. <laughs> I well, actually got it. I got okay, married. Perfect. Good. Good. It's funny. Charles and Molly. Yeah. She officiated oh. their she wedding. She officiated the wedding. Oh. Yeah. So, um, and then our dear friends just got married after being together. Nicole yeah. and Mona. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I even had a conversation in Florida when we all went. And we were all with the girls. And they're like, oh, Jerry, like you and your boyfriend have been together a long time. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, when are you guys getting married? And I was like, well, we're, we want to buy a house first. And mm. then, you know, just figure it out. And Mona and Casey were both like, you understand you don't need to get married to have a family. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do that. 
Right. The traditional way is that's true. Get married, have a kid, have a house, make sure you have a dog, boy and, and girl. And Mona and Cole have a, a beautiful story. She had mm-hmm. a son coming into their relationship, and then they had children together, and they've been together for ten years. And ten years later, they decided, hey, we want to acknowledge and celebrate this relationship with all of our friends and family. And it was beautiful. The whole thing mm-hmm. was beautiful. I think, I think weddings, there yeah. is something very beautiful about yes. a wedding, right? And and so I think there's parts of that culturally that are really cool. But people get married just for the wedding. Oh, my God. Some it's, people do, yeah. It's unbelievable. Did you I spend more right? time and energy no, planning your wedding than your marriage. How the fuck does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. There's a stat out there that if you spent 30000 or more on your, on your wedding, you had like a 30% chance, more a higher chance of getting divorced if you spent 30000 or more or something like that. I spent yeah. three thousand. Damn, girl. <laughs> three thousand. We had a whole conversation and, wow. how you did that. <laughs> yeah. well yeah. Our well backyard. Done. Taco man. <laughs> Taco man. I had a friend that spent. It was such a beautiful yeah. wedding. It was. It was nice. Food was amazing. Yeah. I had all kinds of food. I have Asian food. I had Mexican food. Donuts. I had donuts. I had vegan <laughs> yeah, donuts. Yeah, so it's good. Like the, the I had fruit. Weddings with like, <laughs> oh. and the food is like. But that is also very cultural. I have friends that are Armenian, and every single one of their weddings is like oh, a so whole yeah. thing yeah. performance, yeah. if you will. People go into like it's, extreme debt, like. Not if they're. I mean, <laughs> well off. Yeah, it depends. Well off. But Armenian, a lot of Armenians are well off. But yeah. but there was a guy that I knew that he it was he was 15 years into his marriage and he was still paying his wedding off. <gasps> Yeah. And I'm like, what? Oh my God. And really, I mean, the weddings, yeah, they're beautiful, but for the most part, I could wow. say it's just for the bride. The bride wants this, not yeah. the guy. Like, totally. God forbid you have the guy plan it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm okay, so, so. laughing and thinking about that right now. <laughs> Everything that I was in charge of, I screwed up at the hall. Nice. Wedding. What were you I in charge of? It. Cups and ice. <laughs> I had a. Uh, Cups and ice. So, <laughs> PC from friends. <laughs> So I had uh, I had to do the list like to put it on the computer screen. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this shit. Wait, a what list? kind of list? The, the list, like, are, sorry, the seating arrangement. Oh, right? wow, and that's a big task. That is a big task. Yeah. yeah. Was like the you only, messed up on purpose. Wait, did you have to make it, or you just you needed to put, put it service. on the computer screen? Was she just asking you for technical was, services, it, it or technical services. yeah? <laughs> so you didn't even do the seating arrangements. You just needed to put it on the screen. <laughs> so yeah, that's only, that was my only job. And she's like, Frank, that was you your had only one job. job. One, <laughs> one job. Oh but, my. So it was this is an the, indicator of your whole entire life. Technical thing, and I was just like, I'm just gonna pay. I don't want to deal with any of this stuff, and I just <laughs> hated it. Like, I'm I can be good at almost anything, but if I hate it, I don't want to do it, and I'll, I'll just because of that, I won't be good at it because I just hate it so much. Like, I can be super organized. I just hate to be organized. I just, mm. I don't like to do it. I blame uh, you. I think weddings should be more of a thing. Like, we celebrate. What, celebrate relationship. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean like, you know, like, you don't just get married once, right? You do it a yeah. few times. Like, yeah. You celebrate relationship every four or five years. That's like, I'll be hey. in your yeah. backyard in the next two, three years. Yeah. yeah. Do it again. <laughs> That's awesome. Re-up that. Yeah. Like, wedding, uh, like, weddings are beautiful things, but do people get married for the wrong reasons? Yes. I think... I, and marriage is not for everyone. I mean, you don't have to get married. Like, there's an argument that can be made for not getting married and just being in, in a, a great relationship. And, like, there's just, it's so messy. Like, it's so messy in Western oh, yeah. culture. Life is messy. But I would say, uh, to come back to this, marriage is, however you, whatever container you want to put it in, marriage is one of the most effective ways to grow the fuck up. It is a chance to grow up. Because as soon as you commit your life to someone or, or to multiple people or however your, your structure container looks, it forces you to grow, right? And that's why I framed everything I was starting at the beginning with commitment is one of the ways we grow. It is very hard to grow without commitment, whatever that is, committing to something. And I am a huge fan of growth. So I think the commitment structure is really important in marriage, and I, I agree with it. We're all saying people get married for a lot of the wrong reasons, but committing to relationship in relationship is a very effective way to grow up. Because no doubt, and, and for all of us who are in committed relationships, no doubt um, your partner is going to bring the best and the worst out of you. Mm-hmm. Right, because they're, it exposes all the areas of your life that you haven't worked through yet, mm-hmm. and now you have an opportunity to surrender that and work through it, or not. And so, I, I'm a huge I fan that. of commitment and loyalty. Um, I just think we fucked up the institution of marriage. Yeah. In Western society. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Western society is great for a lot of things: uh, capitalism, 
Um, commitment success. isn't one of them, though. <laughs> yeah, commitment's not one of them. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that are off about what should we, there's improvements that need to be made, of course. Um, but and there's we, a lot of really beautiful, sorry to interrupt you, but there's a lot of really beautiful things about Eastern culture that Western culture could fucking learn. Oh, yeah. Right, around family and around duty and honor. I know it sounds like I'm going full circle here, but there, it's true. There's, there's a lot of things there that if we could integrate the two, I think there'd be a, a power yeah. couple. I don't like healthcare in Western society. It sucks. Yeah. I don't like... At least in the uh, U.S. Yeah, maternity care sucks in Western society. Like, all that's like, it just sucks. Like, in, in, uh, if you go to, I think it's like England, or if you go to... France, well, France, France is the best. Per- France, like literally, like nannies, like th- they're just handed out. Like <laughs> the government pays for everything, mm-hmm. and you can literally get childcare, no cost to you, and at any point in time, whatever the case may be. So, in Norway, you get a whole year off. Is that maternal and paternal leave? Um, just maternal. I'm sure paternal has longer though. Or All right, guys, BRB. Year, <laughs> BRB. Yeah. BRB, going to Europe. I, I think that's a good, uh, a, a good investment into society if you can give women a longer, longer time off because one of the most important things in society is taking care of children. And if you can take care of children in the proper way, they grow up to be productive people of society. And if you take that away and then you have, always have like, this conflict of like, can I, do I have to work or should I take care of a kid? I'm not saying you should give up work. Don't get me wrong. But at least take some time off just to take care of the, of the child. I think that's important. Mm-hmm. You can go back to work no problem, and I think you shouldn't give up on your dreams. I've expressed this multiple times. But I also think that like, there's something to be said about raising good kids <laughs> and, and those kids growing up to be productive members of society. Agreed. Um, why don't we pull up the, the video and look at the, some of the comments? Um, how... How do you love something that you need? Beautifully said, by the way. I love how you said that. That isn't love. Love is allowing something to be what it is. You have to pull it up. So more. that's where a lot of people get stuck. And no offense, because there is a beauty to duty and honor. Mm-hmm. But that's the scariest thing for me, which is one of the reasons why marriage hasn't worked in Western society for a long time, is because it's control. And nobody wants to be controlled. So if you look at the reasons why people divorce, there's a few that are had to do with uh, moral collapse, but a lot of it is connected to I don't get to be me, mm-hmm. right? So you either have to grow together or you grow apart. Irreconcilable right? differences. I don't get to be me. That doesn't always mean I need to be able to have sex with whoever I want. It just means space to truly believe like you are free to be you, however you show up. And that's a fucking hard pill for most people to swallow, even as I'm saying that no doubt people are like, you know, flaring their emotions thinking about that. But to me, that's true love. How do you love something that... Okay. Um, what was the one that got the most comments? Scroll down. <coughs> I think we have to land it in a second. Excuse land me. this plane in a second, but let's see. Hmm. Let's just read that one up there that has two comments. Um, right there. It's not control. It just that sometimes you need things for your soul, but the other one thinks is control and refuses to f- fulfill our emptiness. What? That doesn't make sense. Go, huh? It just sounds like someone who's not getting their needs met. Yep. S- scroll up all the way. Let's see, that that, like the first one had a bunch that first one, yeah, that first one. It doesn't want to have the 24. Scroll up. Yep, there you go. This has been my number one reason for asking a divorce. I didn't get to be me. I was living his life. He loved control. Let's see the, the replies to that. In the middle of the divorce now, I used to say that during fights sometimes, this is your life. I'm just living it. He wanted control. I know the feeling. It's horrible. I wish you the best. I have one voicemail after I filed. He finally said it. I didn't love you enough for being you. Whoa. That was just a moment for him. Now it's back to fights. Hmm. This really hit a chord. Mm-hmm. Which I, I know because we're energetically in transition as a society. <laughs> 11 years post-divorce, I have no regrets. Mine in good moments. That's what made me stay so long in our kid. But when I left him, he turned evil and cruel. Totally different person. Hmm. That's an interesting one. That's the same girl. She commented again. So... Ladies, what, what, what scenario would you be in that would cause you to feel like you're not being you? 
Ooh. Um, if I was asked to stop working, I think, um, and not because we had a kid or something like that. Um, if you had but a kid, if, would you stop for a little bit? If I had a kid, um, I, I think I am good enough at multitasking, but I'm sure I would want to focus on the kid for a little bit because um, those are precious moments. Um, but if someone was trying to control my life and where they said, no, nope, you're not working there, or you're not doing that, or mm -hmm. I have my own money, you don't have to worry about it, I think would be kind of weird. That's control. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, like, is there something to be said about having that conversation beforehand and knowing who you're getting married to in the first place? I think you get to know that person. My boyfriend knows me very well where I'm like, I don't stop working, and yeah. he loves that about me. Um, yeah. If it was someone that was like, uh, why do you work so hard? Why don't, you know, mm -hmm. I think that'd be kind of weird. Why are you spending time with me? Right. I wouldn't marry that person. Mm -hmm. But does, do you feel like Chris works equally as hard as you? That's why mm -hmm. he feels that way. But if he didn't work, maybe if he was like very lazy, he would mm -hmm. be like, why are you working so hard? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, if someone was like, just like that typical scenario of the girl that doesn't work that hard or doesn't have the type of job that a guy might have. Mm -hmm. Um, and is like, why aren't you hanging out with me? Why, you know, are you going to see me? Which I see it in people. I have friends that are in certain trades that are working overtime all the time, working all day, all week, um, and then their girlfriend that doesn't work as hard or doesn't work as much, mm -hmm. and she's pissed off because she's not getting her That's needs it. met. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think it's something that you necessarily go into like, oh, let's have a conversation uh, on this. No. I want to know how controlling you are. But you just learn that through the experience and time. And yeah. I think a good thing that you can do to kind of start with without trying to have that specific of a conversation is talk about their past relationships. What happened? Mm -hmm. Why did they fail? What were the good parts? And you'll like get to learn through patterns <laughs> that someone's mm -hmm. sharing like oh yeah like this person you know they just treated me so poorly and this person like their priorities were just this and this mm -hmm. like you're like okay well the commonality here is you <laughs> so that's <laughs> the red flag for me yeah, um, I'm gonna go and then obviously through you know your own life too I think it's important to one not get lost in somebody else so don't stop being yourself just mm -hmm. because you are in a relationship and that's going to provide more space for those things to come up. Like I remember with um, one of my last relationships when I got this job and I was so excited. It was like, oh my gosh, like the culture is amazing. We have team night. Like I'm going to go out tonight to trampoline dodgeball. And then we have a conference next week and I was learning and growing and there were just insecurities mm -hmm. and control and like, what are you doing? Where are you at? Who are you with? I can't believe you would go on a hike with these people. And I'm like, I like, I finally feel like I found a place to call home and you want to take that away from me. Yeah. And that's when I was like, no, like this isn't, this isn't right. So. But it, it's, I don't, that's not true love. No, that was the yeah. premise of my point. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah the, I agree with you. Yeah. The, as a general rule, uh, it takes whole people to make whole relationships. Right. And so we can't, and there is a beauty in bringing our brokenness to relationship and healing being brought through relationship. But if you have two, we'll call incomplete people who are then trying to complete each other, you create codependence, right? That's what's mm -hmm. going to be created, which is where control comes from because you need this person to show up a particular way for you in order for you to feel fulfilled, mm -hmm. to feel whole, to feel like your needs are being met. Right. And it's, it's generally, codependence is, goes both ways. Right. That, to be honest, like that's very common in my culture is the, which is one thing that my wife wanted to stay away from. That's why she didn't, she wanted somebody that was like kind of half cause I'm half like white and I'm half Egyptian. And she, there's one, there's one like, um, aspect of our culture where men in general like to take too much control of women's lives. Like you can't do this. You can't go out. You can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. And that's I'm most like, cultures. Once you leave first world. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's like, that's um, not on, that's, that's women have been getting a shaft for a few hundred years here, probably longer than that, but <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's absolutely true. Which and is changing. Unfair. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, like I want my daughter to grow up in a first world country, but I also want her to have 
like I, I want her to feel like she's there's duty and honor involved in her relationship. I want her to take the best for both cultures. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I don't want people like in some of these cultures, people like women get abused, physically abused, and they feel like, oh, duty and honor, I can't leave, which is not a good, not a good thing at all. No. So th there are situations where you definitely need to leave, and yeah, like in in my culture, there's sometimes there's like men that like they just you can't work. They they say you can't work. They they do that sometimes, and they say you can't do this or that or you can't dress this way or you can't dress that way or blah, 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 whatever the case may be. And I'm not that way at all. And I think that's what my wife like, loved about me. It was like, I'm just, like, be you. And I, yeah, like, for me, like, I wanted her to do her dream, like, and I love, because I loved her. Like, if I didn't love her, I would be like, no, just fuck your dream, I think. I think I would just be like, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 like I just wouldn't care. I would just would say, just spend home, spend time with you know Emma and just the take kids. care of her. It, it, to be fair here, there are numerous examples, and clearly the comment section of this particular video shows that, of men controlling women, and they usually exert that control through power. But there are lots of examples of how women control men through manipulation, through emotional manipulation. Mm. And that's just as potent and just as destructive. And I know as we're hearing this, undoubtedly there are men who are going, what the fuck, what about the crazy bitches that try to control our <laughs> lives? Which, they're out there too. It goes yeah. both ways. Yeah. And, and, but the, the craft, and as I'm saying this, there are going to be women that are like, no, he was manipulative. But women tend to use emotion and manipulation to get what they want. Uh, I remember I was dealing with a customer a long time ago, and he was in his late 70s late 70s, maybe early 80s, and he was super jovial and like kind of almost over the top happy. So I had to ask him, I'm like, you just having a good day? And he says, I mm. finally divorced my wife. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, and he's like, he's an old man, right? He's lived a good life. He's lived a old, mm -hmm. long life. So I had to ask, I was like, how long are you guys married? And he's like, 40 years. Oh, wow. 40 years. It might have been longer, but it was a long time. And I was like, what made you decide? And he goes, I should have done it a very long time ago. But duty and honor, he didn't say duty and honor. Did he but have kids? I don't know. I didn't ask those questions. I mean, he didn't have, that they were, they were grown. But his, his point was that he felt like he had been in hell forever, and he finally, there was, and I'll, there's, there's an old joke, I'll be quick, but it's a funny one that keeps coming back to me. This, uh, this old man is sitting on the front row of church, and uh, the pastor's preaching, and out of the floorboards, Satan appears. And starts screaming and rah at everybody, and everybody like scatters like the wind. The pastor's hiding behind the pulpit. People are leaving left and right. Old man just sits there in the front row. <laughs> and Satan, Satan looks at him. He goes, "Aren't you afraid?" And he goes, "No, I've been married to your sister for a long time." <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. Didn't. laughs> yeah, I, I think it's more acceptable if like once the kids are grown up, and that that's the most common generation that, um, or the most common. Mm -hmm. reason why people leave is because their kids have grown up second most first second first five years is the, if you can get through the first five years in relationship you've got a statistical chance of making it to the next phase which is kids mm -hmm. once empty in, emptiness syndrome after the kids leave the home is the <laughs> second highest yeah mm. but that first five years of marriage is critical next That's april is fifth, fifth year. marriage nice. or oh you're almost there nice. you're almost out I think there's a lot of conversations that could be, um, you know, had through this, you know, topic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there, you're right. I mean, like, what you ladies have expressed is true. Like, if you love someone, I would, I would encourage duty and honor. But then I would say also, don't marry somebody that you, you don't truly love. Because if you don't truly love that person, you're going to try to control them. You're going to try to be like, you can't do this, you can't do that, like whatever the case may be. And if you're a man doing that, you're not a real man, in my opinion. If you're trying to control, if you're trying to say, give up on your dream or give up on what makes you happy, that to me seems very selfish, very too controlling, and that you just don't care about the person that you're with. And well, let's talk about boundaries really quick, because this can be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. For me, love shows up and says, I want you to be you and I want you to be happy, even if that means not being with me. Right. That does not mean you can do whatever the fuck you want and I'm just going to sit here and take it. Mm -hmm. that, that is not the same thing. And sometimes we misunderstand that. We think, 
oh, loving somebody means we have no boundaries and they can do whatever they want. No, mm. there are natural consequences to decisions, right? There's decisions that people make that lead to consequences, intended or unattended, that may change the dynamic of the relationship. Love just shows up and says, I'm going to allow you to be you and go on your journey. I'm not going to kind of control you. It doesn't mean I won't share my opinions, my thoughts, but ultimately it's your decision and I choose to love you regardless, but that does not mean our relationship is going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could change. And that, and that gets missed. Boundaries are really, really important and knowing where that is and, and, and there are natural consequences to decisions. Yeah. Good point. Any last thoughts? No, nope, that was a good, good end. Awesome. Thank you for uh, joining us. Please like, subscribe, comment, and we look forward to seeing you on the next podcast.